Well, hello, everybody. How you doing? Dave Fenoy here. And it's a Wednesday. And of course, that means ask Dave Fenoy anything about voiceover, that is. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can always drop some questions in the comments uh, earlier in the day if, you, you know, maybe you've got a question you want to ask that uh, you're not going to be around for or, you know, you'd like to see in print. I'll try to print them. And, oh, hey, Omar, Christine, Isa, hey, Pamela, Mark, what's going on? A um, couple things uh, to begin. Uh, I had a couple questions that were in the comments, and I, I recommend you do that. Uh, I also uh, put a notice on LinkedIn and Twitter, uh, and you can, I try to go back and look there. Uh, but yeah, you can get your questions in early. And I had a couple, uh, somebody wanted to know, uh, they want to write narrative for video games. Well, that's not specifically a voiceover question, but we're going to cover that anyway. Um, what I would suggest, uh, if you are a writer and you want to write for video games that you do the same thing a writer for television or movies would do, which would be to go to the places that produce video games, the game developers, um, and find out who the person is or the people are, uh, who are the writers, head writers, uh, looking for writing talent, and get samples of your work to them. Uh, that would be the thing that I would do. And uh, once you start, a, uh, you get somebody to, to write you back, don't expect to just have them say, oh, great, you're hired. Um, sometimes it takes a little time. Uh, they may spend enough time to make some suggestions about your writing and what they like about it, perhaps what they don't or what they're looking for in writing. Uh, thank them, uh, take their suggestions and keep with the follow-up. And of course, uh, that goes the same for voiceover as well. When you're looking for an agent, same thing. Uh, when you've got clients, uh, that you are approaching yourself Maybe they don't hire you right away, but if you are in a dialogue, you can circle back to them at different times. Now, funny thing, how do you circle back? How do you know? How do you keep everything in order? Well, you know, we have these great little calendars now. Your Google Calendar, uh, I'm an I person uh, with Mac, so uh, my Mac Calendar. You can enter in somebody that you need to call or want to call every week, every two weeks, every month, every two months, every six months, whatever it is, uh, you can put that information on your calendar so it just comes up and you don't have to remember it. It's going to pop up for you. Uh, in, in many ways, it's kind of like advertising. Uh, the, the key to advertising is uh, advertising on a regular basis and a certain amount of frequency. So uh, there are ads that you see, you think you see them all the time, but you don't. You see them, you know, maybe they're running for a month and then they're off for a couple of months. And then they're running for a month and then they're off for a couple of months. Or uh, maybe they're running really heavy in a specific period. And then later on, it's just spot, spot, spot. But because you're watching, you're listening you're still getting the idea that I'm seeing this commercial all the time and you're constantly being reminded uh, to buy that product. And if you don't think advertising works, you're crazy uh, because it does. And there's so many ways to advertise these days. Uh, flipping through Facebook, whatever you looked up is uh, popping up, you know, and boop, there, wow, well, I was looking for that on Amazon and here it is on my Facebook feed. Uh, the same thing. Uh, can work for you. Um, you show up in their email uh, from time to time. You'd be surprised how well you can create uh, a relationship just by showing up, just by familiarity. It's that kind of thing if you were riding the bus to work and after a while, the people that are on the bus with you, you, you kind of have a sense of community with. Um, you're working in an office building someplace and the people you see going in and out, maybe they're not in your office, but you begin to develop a sense of, hey, I, I know this person. Oh, they seem nice. Uh, you really don't know them, but 
you have a sense of that, and that's what you want to get. Okay, um, I've had a few people send me uh, their video game, well, video game uh, demos, their voiceover demos, uh, and a few more recently, I think, because of that voiceover and the voiceover awards. Um, and some of them have just not been that good. And uh, so I want to talk about uh, uh, demos for just a bit. Uh, I was talking with a student of mine. She's very talented. Uh, she got a $150 demo done. And uh, she asked me to listen to it. I did. And it did not represent her well. She is much more talented than the demo suggests. And I think uh, for a lot of people, especially getting started, uh, when they look at demos that are costing anywhere from fifteen hundred to you know three thousand uh, dollars, they don't have a lot of money. Uh, it seems like this is just way too much. I get it, I really do. Um, but that hundred and fifty dollar demo is not going to serve you. That demo you make yourself is probably not going to serve you. Uh, you want to get your demo done by somebody who is a professional. At making demos. There are certain expectations that the industry has that don't have as much to do with, you know, your level of talent. I mean, you, you want to be talented. You, you, you want to, your voice needs to be, you know, I'm actually, I'm not even a believer in, uh, oh, great voices. I'm a believer in connecting. Uh, but you have to show that you can connect and it has to sound like something they may have heard somewhere. So I'm not saying you'll always have to, you know, go to the most expensive people, the best known people, although if you can, you should, it'll be well worth the money. But that $150 demo, that demo you make for yourself is probably not going to serve you because you probably, and that person that's making that 150 probably don't have the, the knowledge of really what a demo is supposed to sound like and do. All right, let's jump into some uh, questions here. And hello, every Hey, Julie, Veronica, what's going on? Thomas, uh, you're wonderful, Thomas. And uh, let's see. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, how was my experience in the Maldives? It was wonderful. By the way, guys, um... Take your lady to the Maldives. You want a, a, a nice romantic spot? Take your lady to the Maldives. Uh, single guys, don't go to the Maldives. Uh, I was there for the uh, uh, World Series of Video Games. I was a celebrity judge. And uh, this was a few years back. I'm not even sure they're still having the World Series of Video Games. And they chose this wonderful place, uh, the Maldives. Absolutely pristine, beautiful. Uh, if you see the pictures of it, yeah, looks just like the pictures. Uh, and uh, the the gamers were from 17 to 27, strapping young lads from all over the world. And, of course, at the end of the gaming day, they were looking around, where are the girls? And there were plenty of, of girls and women there, all with their boyfriends or on their honeymoon. So <laughs> it's a place for couples. Um, all right. Hey, Pamela Tanzi, alarm settings. Yes, there you go. Uh, hey, from the not so more. Okay. Hey, from Florida. Not so warm down there. Hey, Michael. All right. Here we go. Uh, would you consider Spider-Man PS4 as the number one Spider-Man video game of all time? Hell, even as the world's top selling and smash hit video game of all time. Also, how did it feel to lend your voice to a homeless man with pigeons? Or should I say the pigeon man? LOL. You know, it was, it was a great part. I, I really enjoyed playing that part. I, I think um, I probably enjoy character work, uh, the kind of offbeat characters, uh, uh, a little better than just playing heroes and whatnot, which I also get to do. Um, I, I like playing bad guys. Um, that, to me, uh, those, those roles are, are the most fun. Um, and, uh, you know, haven't looked at the, the numbers, uh, Spider-Man PS4, I got to go to a screening, um, and it's really good. 
And Yuri Lowenthal, uh, who plays Spider-Man, was just amazingly good in it. So uh, kudos to Yuri. Uh, kudos to the whole production team, because uh, it, it really is... Uh, I, I found it better than all the Spider-Man movies. Of course, now we haven't seen uh, uh, Spider-Verse yet, so I'll, I'll not uh, include that in my comment there. Uh, hi, Dave. Natalia here in Leesburg, Virginia. As a non-union voice talent, how do I find video game auditions? I have a few agents, but they don't send me auditions. Uh, I'm going to start with your last uh, bit there. You have a few agents, but they don't send you auditions. Um, I'm assuming you mean video game auditions. Talk to them. Let them know if they get them. Ask them if they get them, and if they do, you'd like to be included uh, in those auditions. Your agent is working for you. Um, as a non-union voice talent, um, well, some of the pay-to-play sites end up with some video games on them. I would also, uh, do some research, do that Google search of video game developers and start, um, driving them to your, you know, find out who the casting people are and sending them your website, your, your demo, um, send them your demo and drive them to your website. So maybe they listen to your demo on the, in the email. Um, and when that demo, when that, that email is lost, maybe, oh yeah, what was that? Uh, that uh, Natalia, uh, yeah, uh, Mykov, yeah. Uh, oh, what's her website? Uh, give them, make it easy. Um, I read a book about making websites uh, a number of years ago called Don't Make Me Think. And a lot of great ideas, just the title. Don't make the person you're trying to reach have to think about anything. Don't give them any more to do than they need to do. And your website, uh, they need to see your name, how to get in touch with you, how to uh, listen to your videos, right there. Uh, It should be a no-brainer. Um... So yeah, as non-union talent, um, you got to do your homework and find the game developers and talk with your agent and make sure that they are aware that you want to do video games and if they're getting the copy to send it in and maybe you'll inspire them uh, to start looking to uh, get more video game copy in if they're not. What's up, Nigel Woodbury? <laughs> And let's see, always told me, yo, mom always told me you get what you pay for. And that's a comment back to uh, demos. Um, And just recently, uh, for some reason, I've heard a number of demos that just are not up to par. Doesn't mean the talent's not good, but the demos aren't up to par. And, you know, if if your packaging isn't right, uh, people aren't necessarily willing to look past that packaging to do the work uh, to dig out the nugget that is you. So uh, don't make it hard for them. Uh, Hey, Dave, what's going on, Maurice? Um, (laughs) uh, God, I'm getting a lot of thanks for advice about the Maldives. Uh, And while they're still there, this global warming thing is real. And one of their biggest problems is keeping the ocean back. Uh, So go while they're still there. All right, uh, Trakina White, in your opinion, what do you think is the biggest difference between VO Atlanta uh, and Atlanta intensity? Well, VO Atlanta is is a huge um, convention that covers the gamut. Uh, there's some of everything. There are some uh, X sessions uh, for for learning. Um, there are large discussions, um, but uh, VO intensity is strictly uh, workshops and classes and coaching. So instead of all the other things that happen at a convention, all the panels, that kind of thing, it really is just we are getting in a room, working with copy, working with concepts, um, serious coaching and uh, uh, workshops. 
All right. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, well, while you're coming up with some more questions, hello, Dahlia, uh, Marcellus, Ed. Um, I was talking with uh, a friend of mine who has had a very successful career for many years. And in the last couple of years, uh, she's had to take some time off and uh, take care of her mother. And her career has kind of suffered. Now, she did what she really needed to do, which was take care of family. Um, and she was a little embarrassed about it, and she reached out to, to ask some questions about what she might do to get her career back. And she kept saying to me, uh, don't judge me. Please don't judge me. And... I understand what that judging is. In, in 2009, when the, the economy crashed, uh, my two biggest clients went out of business. I had not been doing the homework that I suggest everybody do now and constantly be knocking on, on doors. The economy sucked. Um, I had to sell my house. I moved into a condo for a while. And uh, just the jobs didn't show right away. Uh, and I spent a few months depressed and, uh, you know, blaming, blaming the economy. And, yeah, the economy sucked. But finally, uh, I knew I had to take action. And what I did was the same thing I did when I first came to L.A. to begin my career. I started reaching out to people who could hire me. I started offering my services. I started letting people know that I existed. Uh, and took a little bit, but it turned around. Uh, and I'm doing as well now as I've ever done. Uh, but it's going to happen. And sometimes you're going to have to reach out for help. And the thing that she and a number of other people have to understand, and, and maybe myself um, at some point <laughs> again, because, uh, you know, we go up and down. It's not just, oh, we're going up, 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 up. Sooner or later, you're going to have some drop. And you get your program back together and you go up. If you get your program back together. Um, it can be a little bit embarrassing. You've been living high on the hog and now you can't afford to pick up that check that you were picking up. And um, the things you used to do, you can't do. And uh, you feel like you should be here, but you're not. Well disabuse yourself of the notion that you should be embarrassed about that. Not everything is under your control. Uh, you are under your control, but the things around you may not be. But you are in control about how you react to it. And I guarantee the oh, Julian Kwasniewski, what's going on, man? I, I guarantee the more you let it get you down, or I should say the longer, because it's going to get you down. Uh, the longer you let it get you down and keep you from positive action, uh, the deeper into the hole you're going to go. Uh, and forget about your pride. Forget about your pride. Uh, there's probably going to be some things that you used to do that you, you're not going to be able to do. There are new people coming along all the time. That job may be gone, but you don't know where your blessing is going to come from. Um, for me, a great blessing was Hulu. Uh, no one could have told me that uh, being the voice of Hulu for the years that I was the voice of Hulu was going to be such a blessing or that it would show up. And this is a job that came along in that period. Um, Hulu started in 2008. And when I got the job, which did not come through an agent, uh, did not come through a pay-to-play site, I was uh, at a party. And a guy asked me what I did. I said, oh, I do voiceover for a living. He goes, well, well, there's this new thing called Hulu. They're looking for a voice. Uh, I'll send you a, a, an, an audition. What's your email address? And, you know, he did. I did the audition, sent it in. A week later, I was a Hulu guy. It wasn't a lot of money at first. Um, I was being paid by the piece, uh, and as, but as Hulu grew, my income with them grew and, uh, had the job for eight years and, uh, 
Good money. Hated to see it go. <laughs> My best to whoever the Hulu voices are now. Um, are VOs for games always recorded on site, or is there any chance of recording via ISDN or Source Connect? That definitely, uh, Thomas uh, or Tomas. Uh, there, I do a lot of games, especially international games, right here, right here in my studio. Uh, and more often than not, though, it's not ISDN or Source Connect. More often than not, I'm recording on my DAW, and uh, they are directing. Uh, I have Skype patched in uh, that they can direct via Skype, or uh, maybe they'll just call my cell phone, and I'll have my earpiece in my ear and they're hearing me and directing that way. So yes, uh, there are plenty of opportunities for video game recording in your home studio. Hey, Amara, how are you? Uh, Jennifer, Vittorio. Um, I'm not sure what you're saying was fantastic, Cheryl, but okay. Um, Oh, another question. Are Skype VO lessons okay? Good question. Um, most of my private students, most of the private coaching I do is via Skype. And I prefer Skype for two reasons. Uh, one, it saves you, uh, the person getting the coaching time, that driving back and forth. And two... Uh, as long as I can see you, uh, we can work together. I mean, hearing is one thing, and ultimately what we're talking about is hearing, but I learned so much about uh, what you're doing as a voice actor uh, by watching you work. Uh, what are your facial expressions? What's your body doing? Our bodies inform our voices voiceover lesson 101. If you want to sound like you're smiling, put a smile on your face. Uh, well, that goes for everything else. Our bodies, when we're angry, we, our bodies are a certain way. When we're really tired, our bodies are a certain way. Uh, when we're scared, our bodies are a certain way. And if I can see that your face, your body uh, is representing uh, the emotions you're trying to get across, it helps. I can see sometimes what's going on. And I've been doing this long enough. Sometimes I can see what you're thinking or that what that little voice in your head is doing. Um, and whatever that little voice is doing, it's pulling you away from the read. So, yes, um, Skype lessons are very good. And then the extra bonus. I record them all and I send you the video of the lesson. So you get to relive it uh, and see the difference in this read to that read to where you started to where you got with that particular piece of copy. So um, yeah, Cheryl, I, I really recommend uh, Skype lessons. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Catherine, FYI, we will have your friend Randy Morrison on uh, VOBS TV with George and Dan. This Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific because I kept hearing you mention him and Connection Open. Yeah, I think Connection Open is going to be big. Um, I, I, I think we're all going to uh, uh, benefit uh, from Connection Open. It'll just be a matter of getting the, the studios, uh, producers as comfortable with it as we are going to want to be comfortable with it. So uh, Randy Morrison, uh, who's a guy who's been spearheading this thing for several years, um, I've been testing with him for years. When he first approached me to be a tester, I said, okay, it wasn't ready for prime time. Uh, the concept was really good. It would work sometimes, but they wanted you to adjust this and go into your, your uh, 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 modem and do certain things. I said, look, man, nobody's going to want to do that. This has got to be plug and play. And, uh, but the concept is very, very good. You can have a number of people on the same session listening in the same time, uh, crystal clear, faster than a, a, a cell phone connection all over the world. It's, it, and the headroom is amazing. It's going to be great. Ah, da -da 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 -da. so that's uh, George and Dan. 
um, with uh, VOBS TV. And uh, those are the tech guys. And I really recommend checking them out. Anything uh, tech-wise, uh, those are the guys to put, help put your studios together uh, to get good ideas about uh, microphones and uh, even cameras and what DAW to use and uh, whatever you need for, for your voiceover booth. Julian Kwasniewski, wise word from <laughs> headed out now, but I saw you live and had to drop by. I hope to see you soon. And Julian, I was talking about you today. Um, Julian Kwasniewski uh, was the director for all of Telltale Games games up until right after the Walking Dead game, when unfortunately Telltale kind of lost their minds and decided they could... Um, get rid of the people who had brought them where they were, um, do five or six different projects at the same time with hundreds of people working. And unfortunately they finally went broke and uh, not everything was up to the quality of the walking dead game. But um, Julian, I know has landed on his feet. I was doing a session today uh, with another director that had come behind Julian and writer of games, uh, working on a game, and uh, your name came up, Julian, and uh, uh, nice things were being said. Dino Andrade joined. What's up, Dino? Uh, Great voice actor, great guy. Love you, man. And Bill Holmes. Well, I'm I'm getting stellar people checking me out. All right, Van Rosebro. Um... Any marketing tips that you can share to land more auditions? Um, one, you want to send people to your website, and your website needs to be right. Uh, so it doesn't matter how simple it is. As a matter of fact, I think sometimes simple is better. It just needs to look professional and be easy to maneuver. You need to let people know um, who you are, uh, it needs to represent your brand. Uh, so there's a certain feeling they get when they get to the site. They need to be able to see your name, see how to contact you, see your your demos right there. Uh, and I suggest for people who are being their own business manager, uh, who don't have an agent, because there's a lot of people out there doing that, uh, put yourself together a pricing guide. Now, that doesn't necessarily need to be right in front and the easiest thing to find. That You don't want to talk about money first. Uh, you want them to hear your demos and love your demos and want to contact you and hire you. But when you have a pricing sheet, uh, I've, I've been fortunate. Uh, I've had agents uh, to handle that, agents and managers. Um a lot of times as artists, we don't like to talk about money. We don't like to put ourselves out there uh, and we're afraid we're going to overprice ourselves. And because of that, sometimes we underprice ourselves. Uh, but if you put yourself together a, a, a price sheet of this costs this, this costs this, and explain why. And you need to understand and sometimes educate your client that they're not just paying for the session. They're paying for the usage as well. And up to a certain amount of time, uh, the session fee can cover usage. But if they're talking about, I'm going to use this thing for three or four years or in perpetuity, uh, they should pay for that. They should pay for that. All right. Hey, Nathaniel, what's going on, man? Christina Frank, Everett Oliver. Oh, Everett, what's happening? Um, If you're interested in animation and direction, Uh, Everett Oliver is your guy. Uh, Brian Kelly, what's going on? And let's see, did I miss any uh, uh, any questions way up top here? Um, No, and I talked about uh, a couple of the things that came early. Come on, you got to have some questions now. Um, What's up, Doc? (laughs) Chris McCloy, hey, Dave. Um, I had something else that I wanted to talk about. Let's see, we, we covered demos. You want to have them professionally done by somebody who has done demos and understands demos. Y- y- let me share this with you. 
Uh, if you're thinking about doing your own demo, well, first of all, I don't recommend it. But if for some reason you are insistent upon doing your own demo, um, go to some of the uh, sites of uh, various agents. You can go to CESD, SBV, um, any, any of the agents in town in New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, uh, some of the big agencies, and start listening to some of the demos. Now, unfortunately, I can't promise you that all those demos are going to be good. Um, when I'm teaching voice acting for video games, I often play some demos of some very good actors who are working all the time, but their demos aren't that great. Now, they're not awful. Well, actually, a couple of them are. Um, but it's not as important for them that their demos are great because they're working all the time. They're auditioning and they're booking. They're auditioning and they're booking. And they have a reputation and they're booking. Uh, there may come a point where they need to update their demos. Uh, but if you're just getting started, if you're, you know, you've only been in the game for a little while, your demos are very important. If your demos aren't right, you don't have that reputation that um, somebody like myself or uh, some of the people I'm thinking about have. So... As you get your career started, if you're just, uh, you know, a year or two or three in, make sure your demos are right. It's worth it to spend the money uh, to save it up and do it. Which brings me to another question that uh, uh, I saw. Um, I forget the gentleman's name, but uh, he asked earlier uh, in a comment, he's moving here from Houston, and he was asking, now, should I save up to start my career? Or should I jump right in? And of course, I told him both. Uh, save your money, but get started as soon as you can. There's so much to do now. There's a lot more responsibility to putting together your voiceover career now than there ever has been. When I started, I had to, I had to know what I was doing. I had to have a, a decent demo. And then I had an agent. And my agent... Um, got auditions for me. I did, you know, I got a mailing list and mailed out postcards and introduced myself to uh, broadcast producers and uh, people in, in, well, there weren't video games in, but the animation people and TV promo people. Uh, but the opportunities for that now, thanks to the internet, are greater. But we all have to have home studios now. Um, so much we have to do now that I didn't have to do then. Um, so do both. If you're that person that's still working a job and getting your voiceover career together, um, in your spare time, um, you really just have to stay on it and, and save your money because there's going to come a time you want to take that leap of faith when the number of auditions that are showing up in your email uh, that they need an hour from now that you can't wait till you get off of work, uh, that maybe you've landed an agent and that agent needs you to be available to audition at this place, that place, at home, and can't wait until you're off work at six because more and more, uh, even from your agents, you're getting auditions that uh, you got it now, can we have it in an hour? Uh, you know, sometimes it's low flight. Well, I'm working. I, I don't have time to audition. Now I'm working. And in many ways, our real job is to audition. I always feel like, hey, when I'm on the job, I'm just having fun. Uh, and the real work is the getting of work. Uh, but this is the world we live in now. Everybody wants it yesterday. Uh, so save your money so that when that leap of faith comes, you have some backup. You have something to, to, to live on while you're making that happen. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. What's the size of your sound booth? Hey, Brian Kelly, what's going on, man? Um, Chris, how you doing? Uh, Adam, what is the size of your sound booth? I have a 5 by 7 whisper room that I bought used would have cost me nine, ten thousand dollars I got it for three, shipped it for fourteen hundred, uh, forty five hundred bucks, and I got a great whisper room. 
Uh, Thomas, always great questions. I've heard both good and bad concerning the posting of rate sheets as opposed to keeping it close for your own quick reference. What's the real skinny? Well, you know what? I'm I'm not going to say I am the most qualified to answer that question because, once again, I have agents uh, that will, you know, gladly say, oh, no, he, he makes double scale. Um, I, I think sometimes we heard it. And when I, I said uh, posting, it's not the first thing you want to see. Uh, but I, I think if you have a tab that takes you to uh, pricing, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily want it right on the page and jumping out first. Um, I tell you why I think it's good because it, it shows it. Have you gone into any store and they didn't have pricing? I'm, I'm I'll wait for the answer. No, of course you didn't. Uh, when you go online to buy anything, did they have pricing? Sometimes they make you, you know, click the buy button before you see the pricing, but sooner or later, you're going to see the pricing. Um, and I, I, th I think it's professional, uh, to show up your, your, your doctor, your lawyer, your plumber, your, whatever they are, uh, has pricing. Oh, it's, uh, oh, you want that? Well, it's going to cost this. Now, they may be willing to give you a deal. Things go on sale. Uh, sometimes business is slow or it's Black Friday or whatever the reason. Uh, people give deals if uh, they're buying in bulk. If I'm uh, somebody wants to put me under contract, well, um, you're going to buy my services for a year. Okay, I, I'm not going to charge you as much per piece, uh, per spot. Uh, as if you're just buying one off. But I, I, I think, I don't think it really should hurt you uh, to somewhere on your site, be your client be able to go and find out what you charge and allow them to educate themselves. Sometimes you're going to have to talk to them, but allow them to educate th themselves on what it is they're paying for. Uh, that the service you're providing is, you know, uh, I, this kind of microphone, this kind of, you know, quality, so forth and so on. All the things you offer and what it costs and why they're paying more for more time. That, you know, there's a session fee and there's a usage fee. All right. Um, those are just my thoughts. Uh, if you can only afford three conventions next year, which ones would you say are a must? Uh, VO Atlanta is always great, and that's voiceover is always great. Uh, didn't go to Wovo uh, this year, but I have heard lots of good things about it. Uh, you might want to put that on your calendar. Uh, I have been, I was a keynote speaker at the Mid-Atlantic uh, voiceover convention. Uh, it was good, but small. Uh, that was three years ago. I think it's grown by now somewhat, and it was good. Uh, but I'm, I'm only going to give you my top two. And once again, that's uh, VO Atlanta and that's voiceover. Um, you know what? Other people who are listening, jot down uh, some of your thoughts. Uh, put it in the comments section, uh, the ones that you think are the best. Uh, da -da -da -da. Marcellus Basement Shepherd, crazy question, mouth noises like occasional clicks. Any ideas how to prevent them? One, make sure your mouth is hydrated and green apples. Uh, eating green apples will uh, cut down on that mouth noise. Um, hey Dave, will a private Skype session cover critiques of our websites and current demos or would we need to schedule more than one lesson? No, it can cover that. I have uh, people that come to me for coaching that uh, we're not doing any reads. We're just talking about their careers uh, and uh, career advice and that kind of thing. Uh, most people uh, want coaching on their voice over work, uh, but there are people who want coaching on their careers. So yes, that can definitely happen. Uh, I will be happy to uh, book some time. We'll uh, critique your website and your demos. Um, and sometimes, you know, when we start critiquing demos, sometimes you don't have to throw out everything. 
Sometimes it's just, oh, let's take that out, move this around, and you've got some new stuff you've done. Well, let's get that in there. Um, Thomas again, would you advise to go to group training or one-on-one -on -one for the best results? Um, when people are just starting out, I always suggest a class, a workshop with other people. Uh, one, you get an opportunity to see where you are talent-wise and skill-wise uh, with the other people in the class. And sometimes that tells you a lot. Oh, you had this wild hair up your butt that you could do voiceover and you get in there and realize, oh, I have no talent for this. And these people are really good. I suck. Um, or vice versa, that, wow, I, I'm better at this than I thought. Um, and, you know, it's a lot of pressure when you're in a class and there's that copy and the stand and you have to stand up in front of people and some people are just nervous. Uh, you get an opportunity to watch the successes and challenges of other students and the notes that are being given to them from uh, the instructor, from the coach, uh, without being on the line with your own ego and, and, and how do I take this all in and, and get the copy and understand exactly what they're saying. It, it can be a little, little nerve-wracking. Uh, so sometimes you, you, well, not sometimes, you always, you learn as much from the successes and challenges of your fellow students as you do yourself. So do that first. Classes first, classes first, classes first. Then go for some private coaching uh, where uh, your coach can uh, be a little more direct with you. Uh, one of the things you don't want to do is embarrass people. Uh, in a in a class, nor in in person. Yeah, you want to tell them the truth, uh, but the truth doesn't have to be harsh. Uh, but sometimes some truths are better uh, said to you personally in private. Uh, there's things you do this long enough. There's things you know about a person from their read that you may not realize that someone can know. Uh, and not everybody wants to get all their business out. And, and sometimes part of that coaching is almost uh, psychiatric or psychological in nature, uh, helping somebody get over something or, uh, or understand something. So do the class, then do the private coaching. Um, -da -da -da. And it's okay to do both, you know, at the same time. You know, you're taking a class here, and then a few weeks later, you're taking privates and going back and doing another class and something else. Uh, do agents truly hold all the keys to video game auditions? Is there a resource to look for to find them? <sighs> agents hold the keys to the best video game work. Uh, there's other video game work out there because this is the biggest entertainment industry in the world. We have schools all over the world cranking out uh, video game developers uh, in video game programs. Uh, and what do you think they all want to do? They all want to make video games. They're not all going to be hired by the top 12 companies or the next 50 below them or the next 50 below them. Uh, some of these people are going to get out of school and start their own companies. And they may not have the money to pay union scale. A lot of them won't. So they're going to be looking for voice actors other places. Uh, some of that's going to show up in the pay-to-play site. Some of it's going to be on Craigslist. Um, some of it uh, you will find by just doing your homework, making yourself available um, on your website, easily seen and, and found, and doing the searches and driving people to your website, um, offering your services for uh, 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 game developer uh, students who need voices for the games they're doing in school. They're not going to pay any money for that. But you never know who you're going to be working with. The, the very best game developers are probably, you know, in school someplace now. We've got some great ones now, but this industry is continuing to grow. The, we've got big games now making billions of dollars, but they're going to be better games coming out. And not always better, meaning bigger, more money, but 
uh, new ideas, new storylines, um, concepts we can't even imagine right now, uh, all the, the virtual reality that's uh, hitting the world now. Uh, a lot of those people are still in school. And I, I take you back to Steven Spielberg, uh, some of the same people he worked with on Jaws, he's working with now. Uh, I, there are a number of movies out there that, uh, and production teams that use the same people over and over and over, uh, the same crews, the same actors. Uh, and that's a good way to uh, become that invaluable person that that they just want to use. They know you. They trust you. Uh, you have a, a friendship, a camaraderie with somebody that's coming up, and you come up with them. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Van Rosebogen, what's a fair price to pay for a demo upgrade? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, when you say a demo upgrade, I'm going to assume that uh, maybe you have the 60-second demo and you need to uh, rearrange some things and add a couple of spots. I'm, I'm not, you know what? I don't have a real good answer for you. Um, I, if, if I were uh, doing demos with J. Michael or Chuck, um, and you wanted to go back for a demo upgrade, I'm not sure what they would charge. Maybe instead of 2500 maybe it's more like 1000 Uh Maybe you're just adding, or maybe the price would be based on how many spots you're adding in. Uh, and if the usual demo is uh, 8 to 12 uh, spots or thereabouts, um, maybe it's costing you 100 bucks per. So maybe you could uh, freshen up with three or four new spots and move in some other spots for, you know, a few hundred dollars? It's a good question. I'll have to think about that one. Uh, anybody online here uh, with some ideas? Uh, prices are where, LOL? Huh. Uh, Malvo 2020, Val Kelly. Yeah, I was a keynote speaker there a few years ago. And like I said, it was, it was small at the time. It has grown, but it was a, a, a good convention. Um, if you're interested in audiobooks, APAC and NYC is a must. Okay. Good one. Good one. Um, the audiobooks, I mean, it's such a big area. And once again, I have voiced three audiobooks and hope to never voice a fourth. Uh, but if you love audiobooks, uh, like my buddy Scott Brick, who has a wonderful career doing it, uh, go for it. Go for it. I, I'm not opposed to audiobooks. It's just not for me. Um, and there are conventions that are just for audiobook narrators. And uh, it's one of the biggest doors open if you're interested in voiceover work, and especially if audiobooks is a thing that you'd like to do. Flemish VO guy, VO Atlanta for sure. Hey, thanks, Bart. Uh, what's your experience working in foreign markets? I have a fair amount of, of uh, work in foreign markets. I have some uh, agents that I've worked with from time to time over there. And uh, definitely the video game industry is international. And sometimes you're, you're working on a game that may have been uh, conceived and developed in Norway, and, uh, but it's being produced in South Africa and they're hiring talent from the United States and all kinds of other things. A lot of uh, here in the United States now, uh, in L.A., uh, we've got a couple studios that uh, actually are owned uh, by Englishmen. Uh, they have studios in London, and they've opened up studios here. So it's a very international market. Um, I'm actually going to be going to Columbia to uh, do some teaching at a convention, a voiceover convention down there. I'm going to have to bone up on my Spanish. Uh, let me let me correct that. Not bone up. I'm going to have to learn Spanish before I go down there. Although they promise me uh, that they'll have some very good interpreters. Um, what if classes are or offered in your area? Um, there are a lot of classes 
offered in my area of talking about uh, Los Angeles. Uh, we have uh, probably some of the best voiceover talent in every area of voiceover here, uh, and a lot of very good people. I tell you what, tell me, uh, uh, Amira, uh, send me a note and let me know what area you're interested in. And I can uh, direct you to whether it's, you know, it's voiceover. I'm going to say eh, me uh, or voiceover for video games. I'm going to say me. I do other things too, do private lessons in them. But I typically, um, there are enough people doing promo. There are enough people doing uh, narration, enough people doing uh, commercials that um, I specialize in one area, although I can and do do a little bit of teaching in those other areas. Uh, da -da -da -da. Lindsay K. Hi, Dave. Uh, oh, thank you. All right. And uh, Natalia Baikoff, a newbie to video games. Do you recommend contacting colleges and offering uh, to do student products? Yeah, I had mentioned that, and I, you probably uh, typed that in before I mentioned it. I think that's a good idea. Um you know, we're always, not only do we want to make money, but we also want to build up a resume. And, you know, if you, you, you've, you've done a little demo and this is a way to, to get some more experience and more things to put on a demo or to freshen your demo. Uh, Chris Michaels, VO, can you talk a little bit about how VO website blogs, about VO website blogs and what should be, what? What should we be writing about, especially if we aren't yet experienced enough to offer advice to other VO talent? Uh, you know, I, what I'm going to say is authenticity, truth. Uh, if you're somebody writing a VO blog and you don't have a lot of experience, that's what you're writing about. You're writing about your VO journey, the things you don't know, the things you're learning. Uh, that's what you would be writing about. Um, somebody that's been in the game for a long time and has a lot of information, um, they're going to find things from their point of view, from their experience that they're going to write about. Uh, but we're in a world now where I think authenticity is just it. Uh, people want to hear from somebody they believe, they trust, that is being themselves. Uh, you know, the selling guy, I mean, we still hear it, but the guy that's trying to sell you stuff, nobody believes that guy because they're, that's, that's not who we are anymore. Uh, we want to hear from somebody we relate to, somebody that is authentic. So in your blog, just be you. Tell the truth. Um, it's like the great comedians. They tell their truth. Uh, and that brings me to, to something else, branding. Um, we talk about branding, 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 branding all the time. And a lot of times you, you don't know who you are. Uh, I know uh, for a, a lot of friends of mine, especially who have done a lot of character work, a lot of, of crazy voices, often you get to a point you don't know what your voice sounds like. You don't know who you are just being you to tell the story. You create a character and tell the story, and uh, sometimes that character just isn't real enough. It's, it's, it's too comedic or too serious or too... It's, it's just not enough of you. A uh, couple things. Record yourself when you're hanging with your friends and family. Uh, turn on that recorder, let it run for half an hour, and then go back and find out what you sound like. When, who are you when you're just being you? Oftentimes, uh, we don't know. Another exercise I suggest, write a, a short uh, story, th a short spot, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, about something in your life that's important to you, some experience you had, good, bad, funny, uh, sad, uh, touching, whatever it is, and read that. But let the words only be there to remind you of what you're saying. Tell that story. That's what we're trying to do in this business now, is touch people's heads and hearts. Tell the story. Be you. 
uh, who you are, your worldview, uh, the things you're interested in, uh, the things you believe, all that needs to come through. If people can't quite put their hands, put their hands on, on what it is, but, but it relates, then you're being successful. Um, da -da 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 -da. Okay. In regards to updating demos, is it is it advisable to use clips from past work that was either produced by the client? That was e that was either produced by. Uh, yeah, you know, if this work you've done, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, put it on. You want to be careful about putting stuff on that's too old, though. Um, styles change. Uh, sometimes the product, you know, if we're talking about a commercial, the the, the product that is on there is um, obsolete now or an old. Uh, sounds old, um, a product that's not available anymore. If you're doing uh, TV demos, uh, the shows aren't on anymore. Uh, and, and that dates you. You want things that are, are, are now or just yesterday, not the day before yesterday. Okay. <laughs> LOL, I like that. Uh, do, you have a, do you have or recommend a podcast for voiceover-related content? Oh, yes. Um, do you know about VO Buzz Weekly? Um, Chuck and Stacy have a show. They have won the podcast award every year for the past five or six years. As long as the Voice Arts Awards has been on, they win the podcast award. Um, you can go back and look at old uh, uh, podcasts of theirs. They bring, hey, Bo Weaver, talk about great talent. Uh, they bring on, uh, dude, when are you going to get a haircut? Yeah, well, you're, you're one to talk, Bo. You're one to talk. Uh, they bring on casting directors, agents, voice talent, uh, writers of uh, commercials and TV pro. They, they bring on just about everybody you could imagine uh, that's involved in the voiceover industry uh, and interview them for an hour or so and break it up usually into two shows. And uh, because it's on the internet, you can go and uh, find VO Buzz Weekly. You can go back and see the show I did two or three years ago, whenever it was. Um, and just the very best people in this business uh, coming on and talking about their careers, uh, lots and lots of great information. VO Buzz Weekly, I highly recommend it. Uh, Jake Vetch, can you describe the feeling of accomplishment when voicing a character in a project that turns out to be a huge success? Well, it's kind of like this. <sighs> um, sometimes words fail me. Uh, people ask me all the time, what's the, the, my favorite character that I've ever done? Um, and I keep coming back to uh, Lee Everett in the Walking Dead game. Uh, there have been a lot of characters I've played that I really enjoyed. A uh, game I'm working on, a couple of games I'm working on that I really like them. But Lee Everett gave me gifts. Uh, the game won 100 Game of the Year awards. I was nominated for Best uh, Voice in a Video Game, won a couple of those, and took me from being, uh, oh, yeah, you know, Dave Fennoy in video games. Uh, well, actually, they didn't know my name. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I know that guy's voice. Oh, I really like him on a video game. Uh, that, that, that character actor thing where you, you like the performance, uh, you know the face. If we're talking about on camera, you know the face. Uh, but you don't know the name. Well, after uh, the Walking Dead game, it's, oh, it's BAFTA-nominated Dave Fennoy. It's uh, Dave Fennoy from the Walking Dead game. You know, it won 100 Game of the Year awards. And I can't take all the credit for that. I, I think I'm a good actor. Uh, but great writing, great production, great project, and the stars aligned. And, and uh, so that, uh, very important to me. Very important to me. And uh, much as I love uh, Vol'jin and, and so many other characters that I've had the chance to play, Lee Everett gave me a lot of gifts. I even have a dog named Clementine. Uh, no classes in Colorado for kids? 
You know, I don't know. That's a good question. I imagine there are some classes for kids in Colorado. Uh, <laughs> my mom tells me I uh, have a, a nice voice. You do have a nice voice, Bo. It's, it, you have a wonderful voice. This seems really easy. <laughs> oh, Bo Weaver, who's one of the most prolific uh, uh, promo voices. You hear him everywhere uh, and a great guy. And uh, it, it, it's he's being funny there because uh, I, I understand that uh, my mother for years would say things like, oh, well, you know, I heard that. I saw that show. I heard that cartoon. You know, you'd be great on that. Why don't you get on that one? And uh, those of you who have parents who don't quite understand how all this works, uh, you get it. Um, seems really easy. I'm just talking. Yeah, right. Uh, Chris Michaels, be oh yourself, assuming you know what you're doing. I'm not sure what that reply or what that was referring to. Hello, Dave. Looking forward to whenever your next visit to Dallas is. I'll probably be down there uh, in the summer. Uh, usually, uh, sometime in June, uh, might go a little early. It might go be a little bit later, but this summer, uh, storm waters, uh, can't put, put, put it off any longer. Just had to book a coaching session. Okay. <laughs> well, good. Uh, tonight on good times. <laughs> what are you saying? Um, okay. And Mavo 2020 again. Voice acting mastery by Crispin Freeman is great. Okay, great. Uh, Rama Rodriguez, VO boss with Ann Ganguza and Gabby uh, Nistico. And you know what? And uh, uh, Gabby and Ann uh, do a great job uh, with their stuff. And you notice I'm a fan of other people who teach uh, because nobody knows it all. And... People specialize in certain things, and we've come to a point in the voiceover business where, uh, you know, if you really want to be good at promos, uh, it's going to take some work there. If you want to become good at this, it's, and there's some areas that we don't get to see and hear most of the time. I've broken it down into uh, high-profile work and not-so-high-profile work, and is one better than the other? No. Uh, one's just uh, more visible or audio, audible, uh, than the other. But the amount of work in corporate NAIR and e-learning and audio books is tremendous. There's, there's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, but the people in those areas, uh, they're not showing up in cartoons on television and movies and uh, video games. But very viable careers, and you have people like an Ann Ganguza, and Gabby Nistico, that, uh, Nistico uh, that are experts in that, that have built their careers and can help you build your careers and further do things like, uh, oh, once a year or so, I go down to Ann Ganguza's house and uh, do a, an evening workshop with uh, people that on her list. So uh, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of good people. Uh, thank you so much for the recommendation. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, VO Buzz Weekly is awesome. Yes, it is. Right on, Storm. Uh, hey, Deb, what's a nothing more than a, nothing more, nothing was more theatrical and well done in my book is what you did for Volgen. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Uh, Vita, hi, Dave. What do you do to maintain vocal health or to regain your voice if it starts to fade? Um... If my voice is really shot, I don't talk. I just shut the up. Um, and now to maintain vocal health, I uh, try not to do more shouting than I find in, in whatever video game I'm working in at the time. Um, I drink a lot of water. I drink a lot of tea with honey and lemon. As a matter of fact, the, I can leave out the tea. The water with the honey and lemon uh, is best. Hydrate, hydrate hydrate. You can, uh, to relax your voice a little bit, sometimes uh, uh, do a little uh, deep breathing. You can purse your lips. Uh, 
and that will kind of relax your throat even better if you have like a half inch a surgical tubing that's about a foot long or so and you do that with that i don't know why it works but it does uh da -da 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 -da. gotta love parents who at least feel their kid can do amazing things oh ain't that the truth well let's see uh, i'm gonna wrap it up here in a little bit we've gone over time wonderfully uh whoops ah lou johnson has a great voice oh big lou big lou from chicago uh, but I'm going to say this, great voice don't mean nothing. Um, the best description I've heard of uh, what, a vase, ba what a great voice means is uh, just because you have a Stradivarius violin doesn't mean you can play it. Um, go to my site and get my peppermint oil. Ah, okay, peppermint oil. Uh, you know, um, that sounds good. Uh, um, and Ganguza has a few products out there too that are pretty good. Uh, Chris Michaels, Dave, just wanted to thank you for doing these Ask Anything sessions. It's interactive, informative, and beats anything recorded out there on the net. Oh, that's kind. I know you could be doing all sorts of things, but doing this for us means a lot. Well, you know what? I, I enjoy it, so I'm, I'm doing it for me too. Uh, E.J. May's VO School podcast is a great resource. Okay. Uh, you're welcome, Vita. Yousef, hey, what's going on, man? And I think we're going to wrap it up there once again. If you uh, want to get in touch with me, uh, of course, I'm here on Facebook and uh, you found me here. Uh, you can visit my website, DaveFinoy.com. Uh, you can go to uh, my YouTube channel where this will be posted later on and previous and other things are posted for free. Uh, and if you'd like a coaching session, um, DaveFinoy.com and hit the Study VO tab and we can get you hooked up. Kamala, you're welcome. Thank you very much. See you guys. Bye-bye.